Speaking of talking to Santa live from the North Pole, uh, one thing around the holidays is making delicious treats. And <laughs> Sandy's going through this book and we're just drooling. And the great thing about this book, it's called uh, Kimmy's Rainbow of Hope Cookbook. And the proceeds go to a great cause. And we have Kimmy's mom joining us on the show today, Jane Johnson, who is also the author of the book. Welcome to the show, Jane. Great Thank to have you here. Much. And Dr. Stephanie Swift, she's an on oncolytic virus uh, researcher, did I get that correct? That's right. All right, I got it out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I was practicing overnight. Thank you very much for both of you for coming here. That's and for pleasure. you coming here in particular, Jane, because you're sharing yeah. a personal story. You, you, you lost your daughter, Kimmy, yes. uh, back in 1977, if, yes. if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us what, because we've heard childhood cancers, uh, unfortunately, take a lot of young people. Uh, what what uh, did Kimmy have? Kimmy had neuroblastoma. It's not as you might say popular a cancer as leukemia right and it doesn't get the funding that leukemia got ha, is getting and actually uh, they're doing the children with leukemia now are doing very well unlike children with neuroblastoma and um, it's a dream of mine that one day there would be a cure i thought that i would never see it though right. But now I know that I'm going to see that cure, and it's going to come right here in Ottawa, at CHEO, in Dr. Stoidel and Dr. Swift's lab. So this is very exciting for parents of children who have had or have neuroblastoma. So there have been some recent developments that have led to this fantastic positive outcome? in. The medical community? Yeah, I mean, in the field of neuroblastoma research itself, there have been advances in the last few years, and now with the sort of advent of immunotherapy treatments, we have an antibody against a particular sort of cancer target in neuroblastoma, and that has improved the outlook for neuroblastoma patients, but still, we're only able to treat about half patients and imp improve their, their lives. So there's a tremendous opportunity, really, for us to actually make advances in treatment still and improve the outcomes of neuroblastoma children and their families. Dr. Swift, what exactly is neuroblastoma? What, what, what kind of cancer is it? How does it attack the body? So neuroblastoma is a cancer that affects the nervous system. Okay. Um, and like many cancers, um, there's sometimes a, a difficulty in actually detecting it early enough to, to make a difference. Um, so there's a lot of research focused on improving the detection of this childhood cancer. But then there's a quite, a, the significant proportion is actually on treating the cancer once, it, once it's been diagnosed. And what we're doing in the Stoidal Lab is to take a very exciting approach of using a virus that we find in nature to actually cure, ca cure neuroblastoma tumours. That's amazing wow. to think of. So, d so if, what is the virus in nature that you found? Is it, is it one particular virus that, that you can put into, I guess you're doing it on, on mice at the moment and you're, you're putting it into their system? That's right. So what we did was to take an approach. So oncolytic viruses, which is the sort of the topic that we work on, which are viruses that specifically infect cancer cells and kill them, but don't affect normal healthy cells. What we did was to do a screen of a biobank of over 5,000 viruses that are held at the World Reference Center at the University of Texas. We screened this biobank to look for oncolytic viruses with a particular inherent predilection for neuroblastoma. So they already love neuroblastoma. And we found a few. And wow. one of those is currently our lead clinical candidate for neuroblastoma research. It's called Marabavirus, and it's going to start in clinical trials next summer, summer 2014. It's amazing to think that a virus is going to lead to a cure yeah. to cancer. You know, I, 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 I don't know if I should be getting this deep into it, but I'm so curious as to how you would discover a virus in nature. <laughs> is that... Is that something that, I mean, obviously that's a very technical question. And no, no, don't. it's not. I mean, viruses are emerging in, in nature all the time. Um, and using viruses to treat disease is not a new concept. I mean, that's essentially the basis of the smallpox vaccine, mm -hmm. right. which is what we use to, you know, eradicate a human pathogen that's been causing human deaths since, you know, the ancient Egyptian dynasty. So using a virus um, to actually cure cancer is a relatively new concept, but one that's that's already shown tremendous promise in the treatment of adults with sort of cancers. And now, as I say, with our new neuroblastoma friendly oncolytic viruses, we're, we're gonna be able to treat neuroblastoma patients. And uh, Jane, I'm just, you're listening to Dr. Swift and I can mm -hmm. just see how, how you're, uh, you're smiling and glowing about this incredible well, research being done right here. Uh, 
a good side of this too is that viruses are non-toxic. Right. So the children won't be so sick as they mm -hmm. were in the day when my daughter was sick. And uh, it's, it's overwhelming really and very exciting. No and um, we're just indebted. It's, uh, cancer research in neuroblastoma is worldwide. And, uh, but we here in Ottawa are truly indebted to Dr. Stoidel, Dr. Swift, and their research team. And uh, it's just changed. As, as Dr. Stoidel mentioned, the children also will be leaving the clinic with smiles and no mm -hmm. bald heads. No kidding. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this book, uh, the great thing about this cookbook, not only are there amazing recipes, because we've been drooling as we <laughs> flip through here during the break, but all the proceeds are going to the research. How do people pick up a copy of Every the book? Every cent. Uh, it can be ordered through Shopify. Uh, one can go to the CHEO Foundation website and uh, just click into uh, Shopify and, these and all your order the book. Yes. yes, well, yes, family, friends, they go back a long way. A lot of maritime recipes are mm. in there as well and good home cooking. That's yeah, right. That's, yeah. a, lot, a, a lot of love <laughs> went into making this cookbook for a sure. A lot of love did and it's uh, uh, Dr. Stoidel has written in the front of the cookbook too about his research so that, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, I like that a, side of it. There's yes. a great, there's a great photo as well of your daughter on, on the back as well. There is. Jane, yes. uh, Dr. Swift, thank you so much for joining us. Really do appreciate it, and, and congratulations on the incredible breakthroughs happening right here in our city. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for, for sharing your story. Thanks. Don't go away. We're going to be talking to the Heart and Stroke Foundation right after this because around the holidays, some of us overindulge might not be the smartest idea. Sandy, we'll be back with that right after this. <laughs> Don't go anywhere.